that. Um, apologies for the technical difficulties. Doesn't seem to matter how many times we've, we've uh, done our lectures here. There's always something different that, uh, that occurs. Um, but welcome everybody to Health Data and Clinical Trials' latest intensive session. Uh, today's workshop is all about data. Um, and before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which our campuses are located. These are the traditional lands um, of the Ngunnawal people where we are now, and we honour their elders and custodians past, present and emerging. Now, that's as simple as it gets um, for myself. Um, I'm really excited about um, the breadth of people that we have um, speaking with you today. Um, as always, with these um, workshops, please feel free to reach out to us um, and all the speakers with their permission um, afterwards, and um, also give us feedback. You know, what, if anything, um, should we have said less on, um, what should we have said more on, what um, have we not covered that are of interest to you, because um, we're, we're trying to uh, give a broad overview and hopefully something that uh, piques the interest of everybody, um, but obviously that's such a, a broad range that um, we're putting it out there, um, as I said, uh, you know, lots of interesting and different aspects, but uh, yeah, very keen to get people's feedback as well. Um, so starting off today, um, our first speaker is Alejandra. Uh, so Dr. Maria Alejandra Panero de Plaza is a scientist facilitating healthy living and better public health services through knowledge translation and health research. Her experience in qualitative mixed methods, experimental design and evaluation helps her identify and demonstrate how interventions, healthcare services and technology can provide better choice, inclusion, voice, justice, health and wellbeing, involving health consumers and other uh, stakeholders as co-researchers in developing and implementing evidence-based med uh, methods um, and solutions addressing complex problems on continuity and integration of care and enabling healthy behaviours. She is the recipient of the 2021 Early Career Researchers Vice President and Executive Dean's Awards for the fearless embodiment of the university's values and research and the 2021 Consumer Health Forum video competition, Big Ideas, to improve the Australian healthcare system. Um, Dr. Canary has attracted uh, roughly, uh, or well, more than, one and a half million worth of grant funding as an associate investigator and chief investigator um, with uh, funding ranging from Hospital Research Foundation, Flinders Foundation, NHMRC Partnership Grants, among others. Uh, for those of you from College of Medicine and Public Health, as I know a lot of us are, um, Alejandra uh, joins us from the Flinders University College of Nursing and Health Science. Um, but she's also, um, yes, when we can uh, bury her, a wonderful member of the HEC team herself too. Ali. Okay, thank you, thank you, Erin. Um, I would like to ask first, um, what kind of audience do we have today here in the room or maybe online? So we, we have students, we have uh, practitioners. I would like to know that uh, before I proceed with my presentation. So can, can we gather some of that information? Um, within the room, we've got mostly researchers having a look through um, from uh, well, this is the first year that we're doing this, so I can't um, you know, guarantee from a lot of experience, but from our other intensive sessions, we do have a really strong mix. So a lot of early mid-career researchers that um, you know, might have done some trials and some health data, but it's not necessarily their bread and butter. Um, other ones do, but then are listening in because they want to look at a different aspect and get new ideas for where they can go to next. Um, we do have usually a number of students that um, are just playing, you know, here to learn, um, and the clinicians as well, though the clinicians do tend to review, um, obviously, the live stream, but also the recordings afterwards, just from a um, you know, scheduling point of view. Okay, so this is very exciting because normally this presentation is about evaluation of research. And in my area of knowledge translation, I tend to present these to audiences that are not familiar with clinical trials or data. So yesterday when I was reviewing my presentation, I realized that finally I can put some data analysis and explain a little bit about the um, about using uh, proliferate, which is the evaluation that I'm going to talk about within um, uh, clinical trials. Okay, so first of all, first of all, let me share my presentation. And um, Okay, let me see. I guess that you are only seeing my slides Wait, and informa presenter information. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So um, first, I would like to acknowledge that I am presenting from the lands of the Ghana people, and uh, they are the traditional owners of these lands where we work and live. So I pay my respects to their elders, their past, present, and future generations. So we're talking about proliferate, and proliferate, we call it like that because it's an adaptable framework to, to um, evaluate impact of research, product processes, and clinical trials. And this is a work that has been progressing since 2019, and we have a big transdisciplinary team, as you see here, all the co-authors, sorry, I don't know, this is going by itself. As you saw there, we have several co-authors and people from different disciplines, and this is something very important. If we are working today in clinical trials, uh, developing research products, we have to work with different types of end users, and that means that if we are running evaluation, we have to understand the complexities, be, be behind the product, the process, the intervention that we are developing. So I have this example of a spinning top here, and I think this is what is required today of all of us, because we have to find sustainability of our projects, and these projects are very complex. Let's say you believe you are implementing something to solve, um, to provide a service, let's say, hard um, cardiac rehabilitation. That is not only addressing the cardiac health of the person, it's addressing the life of the person, it's addressing the social impact of the whatever intervention you are developing and testing, is impacting in many other areas. And today, funders are asking us to actually provide evidence that these interventions sustain across time, to demonstrate and measure and track how your effects are, are impacting society and the person and the individual, the family, etc. So it sounds complex, it is complex. And in that, in that way, we use the complexity network model 
uh, as a basis, and this model is a model, model from Alison Pitzels, that basically understand knowledge translation and what is knowledge translation is basically the timely and appropriate creation and movement of knowledge to improve what people do. So whatever we do. In our case, it's research. And normally in research, uh, if we have students here in the room, we, are, we think in a linear way and we think, okay, what is the problem? We identify the problem. Then we research about it. We create new knowledge. We synthesize the knowledge. It's very linear. You see, we think we synthesize the knowledge, we implement this, and then we evaluate. Well, unfortunately, life is not a lab. Like I was saying, we have many components involved in our research today. And if we want to create an impact and demonstrate that we have to consider these components. So we have the community members we have here in the image that you are seeing. We have the health factors and the clinicians and the technical people behind the implementation of something. We have the government, the policies, the education. You think, OK, what does it have to do? Let's say we are implementing an EMR system. Yeah. So we need to educate people and train them about how to do that. And we, of course, uh, are working with different researchers, people from different disciplines. So in this model, we see like a network, like a disaster, like a crazy mixture of things. Well, in reality, most of our projects are like that. They are not linear, like problem identification, et cetera. For the example that I'm going to provide today, I started with the evaluation. Ideally, in a perfect world, we could design together the whole process with different stakeholders, and then we can measure this. Some of that is what, what I'm going to talk about today, how to do that. So uh, we, um, to, to measure things within this complex system, we thought, okay, if we want to understand the human impact of this process, what is our minimum unit of measure? What is the uh, uh, agent or the factor that is common across different um, complex systems? It's the person. And we talk about person-centered care all the time. But what if we want to evaluate how the effect is happening at different levels, whether they are micro, meso, or, or macro level, we have to understand the person within those contexts. So in proliferate, the evaluation method, we investigate the comprehension of the thing that we are implementing. We investigate the emotional response of the person. We investigate the barriers that each person find in relation to whatever we are implementing, the motivations, what does it mean? So let's say you understand an intervention, you like it, you don't find much but many barriers around using it. However, you are really familiar with what you used to do and you don't really want, you don't feel motivated to change it. Why? Do you, you don't see the reason? So these kind of things are important. And when we were talking about policymakers and educators, et cetera. You can think of those groups as networks of people. And if we use sociodemographic variables, we can identify what are the networks. We can divide these people and understand their parents or behavior so that we can influence their response towards our intervention and also facilitate a better impact or better uptake of our implementation. And the final construct, we call it constructs, is optimization. So we thought of, of proliferate as a mixed method approach. So we can quantify this normally, these four first factors and we use the optimization, which is basically collecting more qualitative data, where the person say, okay, I recommend, I will say, I don't like this instrument, and I recommend that this instrument should be using this weight or this other. So this qualitative information is very important for us to modificate our intervention, our clinical trial, especially if it's something done across uh, across time. Okay, so like I said, proliferate has adaptable items, and we consider sociodemographic as the age, the responsive position, the gender, the, the previous knowledge they have in relation to the intervention they were running. We have the constructs that I just mentioned, understanding emotional barriers, perceived likelihood, and we have some open questions to understand the optimization. So that, brought, that was the core of the evaluation. That evaluation goes across a big process. And I was talking at the beginning of the presentation that we have a big transdisciplinary group. So this is very important. If you're going to evaluate anything, you have to consider your end users. And, there's, and the big data approach here is that we have a group first, where in which we co-design and understand, okay, what are our needs? What do we want to do? How do we want to achieve that? How we will measure that? And this group involves people from every kind of user that you can have. And this is a small group, of, I mean, a small group because it's not a big data approach. This group co-design the way in which they will evaluate and collect big data to understand the patterns of behavior within the complex systems that they want to influence. So these are the steps that we use. We create a transdisciplinary group. We identify our evaluation needs. We facilitate with people in the area of knowledge translation, consumer engagement, people like me and other presenters today. And with them, we co-define and establish our benchmark. So what, let's say, we have the constructs about understanding and comprehension. So when do we know? That, that was achieved created in this transdisciplinary group in which everyone whether they are consumers carers clinicians psychologists whoever they are have voice and vote and decide how this evaluation is going to run so they design the data collection and they, they use a scoring system uh, with proliferate so let me scare you a little bit and put everything together to see how this goes we are going to use a case example exemplar this is rapid x ai this is a clinical trial going at the moment is led by professor derek Shu. in this clinical trial there at the end I am responsible for the consumer engagement and knowledge translation. So I am not testing this artificial intelligence tool in terms of their medical uh, outcomes. I'm testing the effect and impact of this tool within workflows. So let's see how we use proliferated. Okay, what, what will be the objective to deliver a novel approach to evaluate the implementation of an artificial intelligence clinical decision super tool to achieve actionable sustainability changes within complex access clinical environments? We need then all these people that we have pictures here. So clinicians, community, and patients to see how they like to be uh, supported with that through uh, artificial intelligence software and I see people, I see the train, the nurses and other people that will uh, work in the, that will 
participate in the workflow of emergency departments, we need experts from different disciplines, policymakers as well, perhaps the clinicians, etc. So what did we do for this? And here is where I put everything together, don't be afraid. It's basically a summary of what it means proliferate. So we have first the creation of the transdisciplinary group, the co-design process in which we establish the benchmark for each of the constructs of proliferate. We collect the data, we design the data collection, collect the data, analyze it, and see which constructs actually achieve their benchmark or were above the benchmark. So if we have only one successful construct, let's say people understand proliferate, but they don't like it, there are many barriers and they are not motivated, this is a poor impact. If we have only two, it's an average. If we have three, it's, it's a good impact. And if we have the four constructs, the four top constru constructs, we could say that it, it is an excellent impact. So what do we do with the qualification that we, I was talking about, the optimization? So we use that information to sustain like the spinning top, the intervention. However, if we have poor impact, we actually have to take seriously the feedback and the data that we collected across different uh, locations and end users to co-design a solution to create. Well, there are different problems and multiple ways to address them, from redesigning technology, developing another kind of therapy, etc. So everything adapts to the problem that you are evaluating and investigating. So in the case of proliferate, we have statisticians, like I said, we have psychologists, mathematicians in our transdisciplinary group, and we decided to use uh, Bayesian statistics to predict actually the probability of impact of RapidX AI. So this is an example where we decided to estimate the prior a posterior distribution um, about the end user feedbacks and the constructs that I talk about. This was developed across a process of two years. So we developed a survey using Qualtrix and R, which is a program, program language for statistical computing graphics. Probably you all are familiar with it to um, to create proliferate prediction modeling and data analysis. So I'm going to explain in general how um, the Bayesian method applied. So using proliferate and Bayesian approach, basically we develop a questionnaire uh, to elicitate feedback in relation to the proliferate constructs. Remember understanding barracks, et cetera. And then we calculate, we could calculate, let's say, the prior or posterior distribution of responses using all these variables that we talked about before, the demographics, understanding each construct, and using open questions to understand optimization strategies. And then we just simply use the validation inference, so we could develop the posterior, uh, we take the posterior, the prior distribution, posterior distribution, to estimate the likelihood of this pattern across each network of or type of end users, and then predict the probability of effects and impact. These effects and impact can change, let's say, in proliferate. We're talking about usability. Okay, how is the effect and impact of the usability of these within workflows? So to prove the point, um, I'm just uh, listing here basic basic principles of RCTs. So we define our participants first as English speaker within emergency departments. Uh, they are self-defined as the end users of people. They use the community patients, carers, like all the groups that I mentioned before, researchers. They are our participants uh, for the big data collection. So the intervention, this intervention can be implemented in 12 emergency departments of social studies. So we randomly allocate an intervention in which we train people with RapidX AI and use proliferate to evaluate that. And another six hospital in which they don't really use RapidX AI, so we use that as a comparator. And we, we are planning to collect that at four points. So at the beginning of the trial, eight months and 12 months, this is 3,600 people. From those people, we can understand their patterns, their location, what type of user is responding, how, they, how we should change their behavior, et cetera, or improve the, the intervention. So this is more like the technical aspects of expert knowledge elicitation, which is the validation technique that we're using. Since we decided to use an online survey, we use um, a method in which we can, um, uh, how can I say, uh, we can estimate the, the probability distribution, like I mentioned. So we use questions like this. If 100 people have been trained using this artificial intelligence, let's say doctors, we ask the, the, the doctors, for instance, how likely is that only 20 of those 100 people understand? It? So we are here estimating the comprehension. And we do similar questions in relation to the emotional response, et cetera. That gives us the curve of the prior distribution. And for this presentation, I just uh, sharing with you um, simulation of how the results will, will be provided using proliferate. Oh, well, the eligibility criteria, we talk about uh, uh, testing uh, um, RapidX AI in people's, uh, people that meet the, the participant description, and they are 18 plus, and we exclude people that do not meet that description. So the primary outcomes uh, basically are um, the average estimate of usability and impact of RapidX AI with 95% probability prediction and credible intervals, intervals for each of the constructs that we talk about. The secondary outcome is the optimization strategy, because nothing we, we, we can't do anything with just data. We have to design a strategy to solve this, and this strategy is delivered by the um, transdisciplinary group. And then uh, we actually provide each network, each end user that can have an influence with information about how to improve the implementation uh, process. So this is a simulation with R that we did just to show how these proliferated results could look like. So here you can see the priors are offered via mean prediction and 95% credible intervals. And we see, let's say, if we establish a benchmark of success above 50%, you know, we can see here the comprehension achieved the benchmark, emotional responses did achieve the benchmark, uptake barriers did achieve the benchmark. However, motivation to use in our simulation, uh, the clinicians didn't feel motivated. And when we did the same simulation for the community, 
just uh, randomly, we also got that the motivation was low, low, lower than 50%. So what do we do with this? We take into consideration the sociodemographic patterns, the sectors that they belong to, and as a transdisciplinary group, we bring our knowledge from different disciplines, our knowledge as the consumers, our knowledge, put that together to create a solution that goes beyond discipline-specific, expertise-specific. That's why it's transdisciplinary. And with that, we then, again, we basically co-design the strategies to maintain, like the spinning top, the implementation across time and it constantly improves. So this is a cycle. You, you see, we create a group, we go through the steps, we find the obstacles or the strategies to sustain, and we can constantly optimize the, the, the intervention or whatever we are implementing. Well, thank you very much. If you have questions, uh, I'm happy to respond or maybe to address them later on through email or my contact details are in the code. Thank you, Ali. That was great.